Okay, Coos Bay cut to avoid barber chairs. Kind of a crazy cut, it goes against most of what we know about cuts and tree work. Um, it's essentially taking the hinge, I'm gonna use it on this little hard leaner here. Taking the hinge and turning it 90 degrees from a flat piece of wood that bends sideways to a mohawk going the other way. And if you think about it, if you take a board and, and bend it sideways it'll flex and bend to a certain point and if you make a cut in that board and bend it that direction it's going to split right there which is kind of what we're doing when we create a hinge you get a barber chair from having the hinge resisting the bending force of the upper part of the tree and not having a face deep enough or a face closing too early um, so coos bay is kind of crazy but what it does is it takes that flat board that wants to bend and flex and and potentially split or pop and it turns it sideways and if you think about it if you put a load on a, on a board 90 degrees to its flat side you put a load on it it doesn't really bend that's you know raptors in your house but if you put enough load on them they just bust especially if you put a little cut in them now the other thing that happens with a coos bay is if you think about it you've got round grain in your trunk and a lot of times if we do a face cut, uh, plunge and trigger, well, the worst way to cut a leaning tree is to do a face cut and then cut in from the back normal. Because what happens is you get about one third of the way through the tree in the back cut. And if you think about it, wood splits, grain usually splits when you're splitting wood or if you think about uh, grain orientation and ax handles, it splits easiest when the cut is parallel to the circles in the stump or in the in the in the log in the grain so what happens is you've got a thick hinge and uh, you're cutting up to it you get about one third of the way through the tree splits and barber chairs and goes all crazy and maybe kills you so you can plunge and trigger but if you leave too thick of a hinge or if you leave too closed of a face uh, you plunge and trigger and you still get the same thing and really that being said plunge and trigger is usually the way to go as long as you have all your all your other cuts right where the coos bay is really handy is where we've got a tree that's leaning so hard you can't get any face in it i I'll, i may put like uh well this tree's dead it's just going to snap off but say you had a live tree and you don't want it to pull or peel a bunch of bark maybe in a limbing situation which is it's a good place to use a coos bay um maybe just put a little curved face in there, but it's really for trees that are leaning so hard you cannot get any face in them. So a little face and then you cut from one third from each side. Um, you may want to not go too deep on the compression side because you may get pinched or you may want to cut the compression side on both sides first and then do the back side on either side. And once you get that all set, uh, be real careful you don't cut too much, especially on the compression side because you'll get pinched and it may split while you're there. You get all set, get out, kind of like a plunge and trigger setup, then you come to the back and just cut it as fast as you can. Um, that's kind of all I can remember about the setup and stuff. So anyway, let's see how it does on a dead, dry, brittle oak. I don't, this type of tree is probably not prone to barber chairing. It's kind of more eastern trees I think that are like uh, especially ashes you see lots of barber chairs with ashes back east it's got grain that is it's long strong flexible fibers they use it for tool handles axe handles and such but for whatever reason those grains don't want to stick together very well uh, whereas oak is kind of short grain especially when it's dead and dry like this it's brittle we're in a desert mountain environment so everything's super dry and it's just gonna snap it's not gonna want to flex and then separate I think anyway something I forgot to mention that is that a coos bay provides no uh, directional control so you just have to be okay with whichever direction it's going.
an ugly mess because my cuts didn't line up where the hoop, but pretty much got what we wanted. That mohawk right down the middle just cracked and split off. We'll get it out of here and we'll follow this next one.